Welcome to Berg Sports Network Game Day. I am Gavin Race, joined with David Brown. This week it will be Wheelersburg taking on Chillicothe in a week two matchup. Both teams losing their week one match matchups. Berg lost to Ironton and Taze Valley was able to defeat Chillicothe. So Wheelersburg, talk a little bit about their game last week and how they came off, how they're trying to rebound. Well, um, first of all, they lost uh, 6-40. to 40. Uh, not exactly the best score you want in a loss, but no. it also does provide a lot of room for improvement. Wheelersburg um, had a few uh, fumbles that weren't um, exactly called for. Uh, there were there were a lot of uh, small mistakes that happened that uh, that can be fixed, and I think they uh, talked about that a lot in practice, and I think they're going to fix it this week. Yeah, uh, Bryson Stamper p starting his first game at quarterback. Obviously, those first game jitters are always going to be there, but right. against a team like Ironton, it's always going to be ranked up a little bit more. But as far as the passing attack, he held his own, finding his guys like Josh Clark, Eric Lattimore, Brock Brumfield. And yes. the Pirates held their own through there. Now, on the ground, it was a different story. It just seemed like Wheelersburg got out-muscled on the offensive line. and Right, and nothing against Wheelersburg because no. Ironton had a fantastic team. No, Ironton played great. And guys to watch this week are going to be the running back tandem of Carson Williams and Eli Swords. They're two guys that are going to play really well together. Eric Lattimore is going to be lining up in the slot with uh, Brumfield and Dorr as well. So we got to be ready tonight to see how they rebound from a loss last week. And, and Brumfield coming off the only touchdown of uh, Wheelersburg last week. Yeah, he made a great catch and brought it in. And first points of the game, but it was the only one Wheelersburg really able to come by. Right, and I remember uh, the first points of the game, you always get excited about that, especially um, with someone who's had a season just so far like Brock Brumfield with l last week's game. He just, the first catch, I, I remember him just, I just erupted out of my seat <laughs> at home watching it. Took off. and. So they'll be playing against Chillicothe, and the guy to watch for them is number eight, Mason Darty. He is a gunslinger-type quarterback, and the offense runs through him. Right, uh, as does most offenses run through their quarterback. But, um, you know, last week, you know, he links up with his multiple weapons like uh, Jaden Kane and uh, Xavier Doss through the air. Just his, you got to have those wide receivers open if you're uh, planning to make some damage. Yeah, and they're going to mix it up in the backfield a lot. They have a couple guys they go to. The main uh, proponent of their rushing attack, though, is going to be number nine, Tylen Scales. So you got to keep an eye on him, make sure that they can keep him under wraps. Uh, Wheelersburg coming off a big loss last week. Both teams playing in a rivalry game, right. losing. They want to be able to come back and bounce back this week. Wheelersburg playing at home. You'll see later tonight when we take on Chillicothe. Hopefully the Pirates are able to pull out a win. Right. Um, but with that, we're going to go ahead and move on. Uh, we'll be right back, and we have a special guest coming on this week, Eddie Miller. So we'll be right back with that interview. Welcome back. Today we're here with Eddie Miller. Uh, thankful you were able to come out and join us today. Uh, you're pretty decorated, when it, safe to say, whenever you played here at Wheelersburg. All-time leading in yards and touchdowns, running and passing. Talk a little bit about how you were able to be successful here at Wheelersburg under Coach Woodward. Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here talking Wheelersburg football. Um, yeah, had, had some success there, uh, 2012, 2013 as the quarterback. I uh, had a lot of, lot of good guys, a lot of athletes around me that really made, uh, made me look good and made the numbers look good. But uh, hats off to Coach Woodward and staff. Uh, that 2012 season, we kind of rolled out the spread, uh, no huddle offense. So it was, uh, it was exciting to be able to 
you know, kind of orchestrate that and, and lead that charge. Whenever you were here, it was always electric to see what you were able to do out on the field. Uh, 2013 season, I can remember that Ironton game week one, you guys absolutely beat the brakes off yeah. them coming off a season where you lost to them. Obviously, season didn't really end how we wanted to, but you were able to make something out of nothing in the backfield. And how important was that as a you? How important was that for you as a quarterback to be able to be a playmaker back there? Yeah, well, it, it started up front, had a, a great offensive line that, that bought me enough time, um, was a, a dual threat quarterback, so had the ability to, to get out of the pocket. And uh, when it was, when it was uh, outside the pocket, it was, it was backyard football. You know, uh, myself and Dylan Miller, uh, Tyler Claxton, to, to just name a couple, um, we were playing backyard football and just out there making plays. So obviously back then there's a lot more, the competitiveness of skill level w was a lot closer than it was in the SOC than it is n it was in recent years. Mm -hmm. Obviously Valley had some of the best teams they've ever had in their program history and you struggled playing against them a little bit. Talk about those games and how you guys approached those games and because that was a huge rivalry back in the early yeah. 2010s. Right, so they uh, they got us in uh, 2011, my sophomore year, um, and like you said, they they had a, a great ball club. The program was uh, really a, had peaked, in my opinion, a bunch of players. But as far as preparation, we uh, we stepped into those games just like we would really any other game. Um, you know, it, it, conference championships. They that's what we strive for each and every year. Um, uh, we we fell short of that. But uh, as far as preparation, we we hit it head on. Um, we gave it all. We we left it all on the line and. Came up, came up short, ran into a, a really, really talented Valley club there. And obviously you did have some great performances in there. I can remember whenever you guys would play Jackson. I think you guys swept Jackson in your time here. Yes, we did. Um, yeah. Beat some good Fairland teams. Yep. Uh, when we still did play Portsmouth, you guys beat them. But we obviously all know what happened there. So yeah. those non-conference games, because obviously the non-conference schedule is a lot different now than it was then. How was it playing some more local teams instead of going out and getting teams like Russell and Ashland. Right, yeah, playing those uh, kind of close to home non-conference games, it made it exciting because you uh, you typically knew who you were lining up uh, against, is, you know, more, maybe more on, even on a personal level. Um, you know, Fairland and, uh, and Jackson uh, growing up playing junior high against them in, in all sports. So um, it was it was great and it, it made for a really, really great atmosphere when you play these teams that are just 20, 30 minutes down the road, um, the the stands are packed. It's, it is, it's electric. Now, you were a part of the coaching staff last year. You coached some with some of the wide receivers and guys returning like Brock Brumfield, Casey Doerr, uh, Josh Clark, Eric Lattimore. They're working with someone who, like yourself, you got some meaningful minutes your sophomore year and now stepping into that role as Bryson Stamper this year the quarterback position if you had advice to him with the weapons he's got around him what would what would it be to him yeah so Stamper is in a, a unique role um, I just to say he did a, a great job last week going into an Ironton game that uh, talk about a talented ball team they have uh, as a sophomore he was he felt comfortable um, I would tell him to, to maintain that confidence um, came up short last week but uh, this team is going to grow each and every this will be a different different ball club week 10 that that we saw um, they're they've got some youth they've got some um, veteran guys but as far as the the talent on the edge his job uh, is just to distribute you know he doesn't have to make the the uh, the incredible uh, you know plays running left and right uh, get it get it out quick and, and let those guys make you look good now, you did work with the wide receivers, and there's been a lot of hype around uh, the Lattimore brothers. You probably worked more with Eric than mm -hmm. you did Derek. Yeah. Um, how, like, what do you see in Eric is going to make him kind of one of the special players that Wheelersburg has every couple years? Yeah, no doubt. Eric, uh, he is one of the most talented um, slot receivers. I had a great one in Tyler Claxton, so I can't knock him. Um, but. Eric Lattimore, um, he's got the speed, he's got great hands, he is very, very coachable, um, and that's what's going to get him to uh, have some success here at Wheelersburg. And if, if he chooses so, I think he's got a, uh, an opportunity to play at the next level. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit more about it later. We already talked about it a little bit during the show. Uh, tonight they're playing against Chillicothe. 
gunslinger in the backfield and Mason Darty. They run a spread style offense, very similar to Wheelersburg. Couple formations they'll come out in. Defense is a multiple style. How do you think Berg's going to approach a game like this where the athletes might be able to match up, but a game where Coach Woodward can probably outcoach? Right. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, like you said, they're going to throw it around. They uh, they're really big up front, from what I understand. Um, but as far as man for man, I, I'll take the Pirates any day of the week. We've got we've got the size, we've got the strength, and we've got talent on the edge. Um, as far as as Coach Woodward and staff, um, I'm sure they're going to iron out some of the wrinkles last week um, and really get this offense where it needs to be. In, in my opinion, the, the score didn't reflect it last week, um, but our defense played outstanding. Unfortunately, we kept them on the field all night due to turnovers. So uh, I, I think we'll be in good shape tonight. Uh, so tonight we will be ch playing Chillicothe. You said you'll be there tonight. I'll be there. Uh, you have a message to the community to – what they can do to support tonight? Yeah, we're, we're back in Ed Miller Stadium. There's nothing like it. Um, hats off to, to the, the cheerleaders, the band, um, the fans. That This is what makes Wheelersburg so special these Friday nights in Ed Miller Stadium. Eddie, I appreciate you coming out. Uh, if you want to stick around, we're going to do some pick'em later. We'll be right back with that. Uh, you're watching Berg Sports Network. Welcome back, and now we're here to the Pick'em Show. Good to have you back, Mr. Eaton. Uh, Eddie's joining us this week. Uh, there's a couple games that we're picking this week that they don't know much about, but that's the nature of the game when you're doing this. Uh, last week didn't go too well for me and David. Didn't go too well for you either, but you outperformed me and David. That's all that matters. <laughs> Look, win by one point, win by 20. Win. That's all that matters. Win. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you went four and five last week. Uh, me and David went two and six. Eddie, you weren't here with us, but you're going to be able to get yourself on the board this right. week. Yeah. So we're going to open it up. We're going to go with Amanda Clear Creek at Unioto. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. You get the first pick on this one. Ooh, the Aces versus the Shermans. Amanda Clear Creek, story, you know, program tradition. Unioto on the rise. Um, but I'm going with the story program. I'm going with the Aces of Amanda Clear Creek. I'm going with Amanda as well. Uh, they took down Jonathan Alder last week. Oh, game over then. Big squad. I wasn't going to share that info, but <laughs> I'm going to Amanda. Uh, I know nothing about American Clear Creek, so I'm going to go with Unioto because they have a great cross-country course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going with Amanda. They're, every year it seems like we're talking about Amanda Clear Creek, where they're going to be ranking in the playoffs along with Wheelersburg and Ironton and where they fit in that Division Five race. Obviously, they're doing something right, so I'm going to stick with them. Uh, Cole Grove will be going to Lucasville Valley tonight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the reins on this one. Um, even though Valley did struggle last week, I feel like it's a bounce back week for them. They win this week, considering they're heading back home. Whew. All right, Cole Grove, Lucasville Valley. I actually think this one's going to be supremely close. I think this is a pick of one. Um, and just because I dominated you last week, I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to go Cole Grove. Uh, like you said, Gavin, Valley coming off, Portsmouth, heartbreak. Uh, back, back in Lucasville, I'm taking Valley. Um, I like Cole Grove's stadium name. Cole Grove. <laughs> <laughs> Grove Yard. Uh, okay, so here's the one that I know Eaton's been kind of up in his seat all proud about. Uh, right. Fairland's going to Oak Hill tonight. And, before, we, before we do anything, <laughs> how does that make you feel knowing that Fairland won last week? Well, the you said line. a touchdown. 
It was one point. Well, the bottom line is is that, once again, one point is 20 points. It doesn't matter. Win's a win. Um, you know, I'm not going to gloat because, you know, I may get beat this this week. Uh, but if I beat you guys two, two weeks in a row, guaranteed I'm gloating. <laughs> but I'll t- go ahead and tell you, the Dragons, that's yeah. it. Dragons. I'll, bend, I'll bend the knee as well. I'm going to say Fairland wins this week. I'm taking Fairland. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go Fairland. Fairland sweeps this week, so – Okay, here's the one that everyone's been talking about. The marquee matchup. Jackson will be going to Ironton tonight, and we saw what Ironton was all about last week, and Jackson put the beat down on Logan last week. This one is tough, but I'll be going with Ironton this week due to the home field advantage. I'm going to pass for a minute because I feel like me picking first kind of kind of sets everybody else up. So, David, I'm going to you. You're going to me? Okay. Um, like Gavin said, Ironton really did uh, prove themselves last week. And with the home field advantage, there's just something different about Tank Stadium. I've got to go with Ironton. Whew. I'm going the other direction here. Ironton, Berg matchup, it takes it out of you. That week one, uh, you know, the, the excitement building up to it. Um, Jackson's got a big quarterback. He, uh, he's, he's a tough kid. I think he's a junior. I'm taking Jackson, coming in as the underdog, taking down Ironton. Um, the bottom line is is that uh, I'm picking Jackson, and it's simple as this. Andy Hall's from Wheelersburg. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. There it is. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, another one you can kind of push your chest out of about a little bit. I didn't want to puff my chest up about this because, you know, I, I, I like Coach Gillen. I did not want Wes to lose. <laughs> it's a family thing. Well, we have Wellston. They'll be going to Piketon tonight. Uh, Piketon uh, handled uh, Memphis last week. So I'm going to be going with Piketon, home field advantage, returning their quarterback. Piketon, big. Piketon. 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 Don't forget West and Portsmouth. That's what I thought you were talking about. Oh, no. We'll be getting there. <laughs> um, so now we got Minford. They'll be going to Chesapeake this week. And I believe Chesapeake is coming off a win, correct? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. No Good idea. question. Uh, Minford's coming off a week one loss. They're going to Chesapeake. That's one heck of a bus ride from this area. However, I'll be going with Minford this week. I think uh, the Pika kid is going to run wild. I'm going Minford. I'm taking uh, I'm taking Chesapeake due to the fact that last weekend I cautiously rolled through a intersection. My the light may have been pink. Uh, come across <laughs> the bridge, the Chesapeake officer graciously let me uh, off on the pass. So peak. Now I'm gonna go to Chesapeake for a different reason. Um, uh, with Piketon beating Minford, I just don't see Minford uh, coming back just yet. They will have a comeback week. I don't think it's gonna be just yet. Okay. Fair enough. So, I like, like the fact that we're going different directions because that could change the record. That is like true. That. Now, you did talk about it a second ago. Portsmouth is going to Portsmouth West tonight. And you said you kind of felt bad about picking against Coach Gillen tonight. I is did. that going to change uh, your I'm, prediction this week? Nope. I'm going with Portsmouth. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, I think Portsmouth's a better team. And, uh, you know, J- and West is young. And they'll get there, but just not yet. I'm also I'm taking Portsmouth. They took down Valley. Was that week one? I think they roll roll uh, West this week. The fact that they shut Valley out in that second half really, I just got to go with Portsmouth. Well, I was going with Portsmouth in the beginning and kind of oh, feel not like not so fast, my friend. <laughs> not okay. so fast. Kind of feel like I, I don't want to run the train as all, all. And like you said, Coach Gillen's first year. This is like a game where he can make a statement. Valley beating Valley big last week. Portsmouth, they're coming off a one-point loss. Don't sleep on the Senators. I'm going to pick West. Good choice. It'll be a close game. I guarantee it. All right, we're going to move across the border for these next few ones. We got Ashland taking on Boyd County. Ashland coming off a week one loss. Surprised all of us. We all picked the Tomcats last week. You said Tomcats big. I did. Well, it was Tomcats Ooh, wrong. Out. <laughs> Tomcats wrong. <laughs> Look, so I, I wasn't coaching the Tomcats. Don't blame me. So this is, I'm going to give it to you, Boyd, Boyd versus Ashland. I mean, I know nothing about Boyd County, but I know Ashland has a good program. And, you know, I think maybe uh, I was wrong. Maybe they're rebuilding a little. I'm not sure. But I'm going to go Ashland. I'm going to go with the Tomcats, and I'm not going big. I'm going to go <laughs> Tomcats. Tomcats, because 1.20 points. That's right. 
Uh, I'm also taking Ashland. They rebound this week and, and put it to Boyd County. Yeah, I think they uh, last week last week was probably a lesson they had to learn. I uh, probably don't go in with a puffed up chest, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think they're going to come out with a win. Yeah, I'm going Ashland too. So Ashland's going to sweep this week for us again. And I don't know. Maybe if next week we're coming into. Oh, well, next week we're we're going to lose week hard. Next week if we're talking about another Ashland loss, it might be a little different. So next we got Raceland against Russell. Russell, week one loss. They lost to Morgan, I believe. Uh, maybe, I'm not too sure. And Raceland, week one win against Ashland. We saw them a little bit in the preseason. Surprised us a little bit because I didn't, they, I wasn't too impressed with them, but you get a week one win, you get my pick. I'm gonna go with Raceland. Well, obviously I'm gonna be the first to say I was wrong. So I'm gonna go Rams by 17. Rams by 17. 17. Yes. Uh, we, Berg's got Russell next week. Is that right? So right. I, I think they're going to uh, catch themselves looking ahead to the Berg. So I'm, I'm taking Raceland. Raceland's taking them down. Russell gets caught looking ahead. I'll go with Russell just because I feel like it, in, con in contrast <laughs> to what you said, Okay. Uh, I think they're going to be in the phase of building up to Wheelersburg, and they're going to be in that mindset of, you know, if we get the train moving, we can keep it moving. There you go. Like um, next one we got, we're going to come back across the river. We got Johnstown Monroe, a former adversary. Wheelersburg saw a lot in the playoffs, a lot of history there. They're going against Wheelersburg's conference rival in Waverly. So Waverly, big win last week over Miami Trace. Do they continue rolling? This one's a tough one. Like this one is, this one is tough uh, because both of these teams – are capable of putting up big, big numbers. But I'm not going to go against the SOC faithful. I'm going to get for the Waverly Tigers and a smidgen. Maybe an extra point, but I'm going to go with the Tigers. <laughs> I'm taking Waverly as well. I think it's going to be a track meet. We're going to see 50, 60 points. It's going to be a shootout. But Waverly, Waverly in double overtime. I'm with you. It's going to be close. Hey. Double OT. Double, OT. double overtime. Um, I was going to pick Waverly, but – also, you got a lot of ground to gain, so you got to switch it up. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really want to go with all you guys because then the record's going to look different. I understand. So, um, to that effect, I'm going to go with Johnstown Monroe. So, what about Greenham County, Martin County? Um, well, I got to pick Johnstown Waverly well, first. Well, I mean, we know who you're picking. <laughs> I Waverly. Know. That's what I thought. That's <laughs> you have the I SOC thought. bias. I, I mean, I might got a little SOC bias. I might feel a little hurt about how they talked about me last time I was on the sideline of a Johnstown game, but uh, that's he neither here nor there. So, uh, Green Up Martin County, last game we're picking from Kentucky. I'm going with Green Up. Uh, I feel like their program is a lot more built than Martin County. I don't know much about Martin County, so I'm going to go with the team that's 15 minutes down the road. I, I have absolutely no <laughs> clue. Zero clue. Um, you know, this is no disrespect to either team, but I'm going to go with Martin County because my favorite teacher was my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Martin. <laughs> there it is. Good there enough. Is. I'll, uh, I'll take green up. I'll take green up. No reason. <laughs> I'll go Martin County, also yeah. no reason, but I'm also going to say, by three. By three. By three. Okay. We keep track of this because if we're right, we get a tootsie roller. <laughs> <laughs> Extra point. Yeah. All right, so me and David are going off the board on this one, and this one's all you two. Feel free to talk about it as much as you want. We got Chillicothe, the Cavaliers, heading down to Ed Miller Stadium tonight. All right, so I'll start with you, Eddie. What are the strengths and weaknesses of Chillicothe? Chillicothe, they, uh, they've got a, a good running back, from what I, or running back, uh, quarterback returning. They're big up front. Um, probably similar size to Ironton, maybe not <coughs> as athletic nor physical. Um, so as far as weaknesses, um, I believe they, they had a couple turnovers last week, so they they're, um, have the capability of coughing it up. Mm -hmm. um, I think this game highlights our defense. Our defense, uh, uh, they may shut them out. I think it's gonna, they're going to hold them to a score, maybe two. But this week, Wheelersburg offense, we come alive. We're going to see... Uh, we're going to see Eric Lattimore in the end zone. We're going to see Carson Williams in the end zone. Uh, we're going to see uh, Door in the end zone. We're going to see a lot of, lot of, lot of scoring. I'm taking Berg, running clock. Running clock. Oh, hold on. Let me get my notepad out. This is. Let me get my notepad out. This is interesting. Gonna, this is interesting. Write that down. Be electric tonight. All right. So I, I mean, you know, I've really thought long and hard. Wheelersburg. 
right. <laughs> yeah. Wheelersburg, and who cares by how much, but it's Wheelersburg. That's right. And, uh, you know, what's always exciting is the first home game for seniors, you know, cheerleaders, band members, you know, coaches. Like, it's always nice, that first home game, just to see all the people in the stands. Um, and I agree with that. It'll be electric tonight. It'll be fun. Um, I hear the cannon going off multiple times. So, you know, really looking forward to being there and helping your guys' this crew, doing a little stat work <laughs> in the back. Um, yes, sir. So I'll be up in the press box with the children. Um, but more than anything, just looking forward to seeing our kids uh, ride high. And I will say this. Um, we have a lot of young kids on our team. And, you know, sometimes with our faithful, people have a hard time being patient. Yeah. Um, but with young kids, you have to learn to be patient, you know. And, you know, I think our sophomore quarterback tonight plays a lot. He takes care of the football better, and I think you know he's had another week of prep. I think he's going to play well tonight. I really do. Bryson Stamper's a great kid, and I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, be a little more successful tonight. And that's a hard you as well as anybody know as a quarterback, awful hard as a sophomore out of the gate playing Ironton. Yeah, at Ironton. That's right. We we touched on it earlier. Yeah, the the, the, the kid was put on a, a big stage, and I thought he, he performed well. And, yes. Uh, some of that confidence should carry over this week and just distribute the ball and. The, the town on the edge in the backfield will, will, will take care of the rest. I agree with that. I think just being on your home turf helps you be a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. So. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out. You'll be in our stat crew tonight. Uh, we'll hear a little bit more from Eddie as the game goes along. Uh, appreciate you guys coming out. Wheelersburg, Chillicothe tonight. You'll be hearing from me and David come game time. So appreciate you all watching. Stick around for some high school football. Wheelersburg taking on Chillicothe. I'm Gavin Race. I'm Mr. Eat. Eddie Miller. I'm David Brown. We'll be right back with some pirate football. Go Bird! Go Bird! <laughs>